Who will we entitle? That's the question. Who would have an entitlement to a training place? Largely the debate has been about Cert 1s to 3s. Uh, every Queenslander, every Australian perhaps, but I'll talk about Queensland, every Queenslander should have a guaranteed subsidised place to a Cert 1 to 3. That's not bad. If you look at the data in the, a couple of slides previously, not bad. But it's certainly our position that we need to have a look at the labour market. We need to know where the jobs are. We don't want to invest in skills that are, that are here today but will be gone tomorrow. How do we have a more strategic view to that public investment? Industry's already saying, hang on a minute, entry level pathways to some industries are higher than Cert 3. So therefore, an entitlement should apply above and beyond Cert 3. So instantly, an AQF level may not be the best determinant for entitlement. This will be, uh, I guess, the structure of a consultation we'll have with you and with industry and with stakeholders over the coming months. So that, that's, that's been an interesting dimension as we start to look at the Victorian experience. There's also a view that what's the second chance look like? Uh, you know, what, what, not everyone's going to make the first choice of qualification the right one. So what does the second chance look like? Again, we're not ruling out a second chance, that's for sure. And we're not saying the second chance has to be a high quality. We're saying, uh, in our view, that a second bite of the cherry, if you want a second funded call at Cert 3 or above, there's no question that any subsidy would be focused on a job. How do we make sure that investment leads you to maximum employment opportunity? What will it cost? There's the scary one. We're doing that modelling now, very, very early days, but again, the Victorian experience in the document I saw recently says VET investment last year grew by 157 million. Uh, that's good. That's a real positive. That shows the enormous courage. But at the moment, we've had some problems in Queensland around disasters and the like, and, and that's a matter for public record. So I, I don't like my chances of convincing Treasury to do that next year. But, but we don't need it next year. It's a question of when will entitlement bite. So once you put the reform in place, it does take time. So that's the modelling we need to get right. Information. If you're a citizen out there, you're a person, you're about to pick a provider, how do you pick one? So information and how we communicate to the marketplace is really important. I know you all have your own strategies around that. That's an important part of this dimension. We need to be confident that, that those sorts of structures are in place. We also need to be confident, and this is perhaps my responsibility, on how do we inform our citizens, how do we inform our students about what is happening in the labour market? I could throw that slide up before, put it on the web and say, I hope that's enough. It's probably not. So how do we link them to making informed choices? I know my children are going through it every day, and they still don't know what they want to do. I haven't got the courage to tell them, but nor do I. When I grow up, what will I do? Uh, but I think plenty of you would say, Rod, you'll never grow up, but let's have a look at what you're going to do. Uh, in terms of competition, it is about cont contestability. It's not about anti-take, it's about we need flexibility. We need employers driving the bus, but we need students and employers saying, here's the program I want, and here's the provider that best meets my needs. And what we don't want is that provider then coming to me saying, I've run out of money in my contract has to be more flexible and more fluid than that. But, make no mistake, if you look at the regional and rural dimension of Queensland, and this complex thing around our service obligations and the like, TAPE has a really, really important part to play in this model. And, 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 and any model that we implement will certainly recognise that. And the last one, and uh, this is the Robo Flip, our quality is absolutely paramount in this. I heard the questions about international education, uh, and there were some quality problems, certainly not in Queensland, I'm pleased to say. But, but quality is important. What we want is when someone turns up to an employer and says, I've got a certificate, three in, that employer goes, hey, that's, that's what I want because they'll understand the quality dimension. And we've come a long way. Our sector's fantastic at, at, at celebrating uh, our failures rather than successes. And, and we have a fantastic uh, system, so we're building on a positive system. But quality dimension and how you access public funding is something else we're also grappling with. So that's all about how you support a market. So, look, the way forward. Uh, we're, we're charged with a statutory responsibility to provide government with a skills and workforce development plan in November, which in, in a policy sense is almost tomorrow. This, this part of the model has to be a key feature of that. The transition plan to entitlement has to be a key feature of that. So you can imagine 
pardon me, uh, we're working pretty hard on this stuff now to get the questions right so we then can then ask you what you think the answers might be. So time's of the essence. Uh, we've got national uh, agreements being re renegotiated and certainly this sort of stuff needs to feature in that. So collaborative, collaboratively with the department, we're certainly looking at uh, these sorts of reforms now. So in terms of the role of private providers, I haven't specifically addressed that through the presentation necessarily, but you can see how important your positioning is. Uh, it's always been the case in the marketplace. In fact, a lot of you tell me it's far easier just to get on and deal with your clients and don't go near public funding. Uh, well, I understand that, but, but entitlement now will be about really coming up with a simple system for our sector. And I won't talk about removing red tape because you know whenever someone says, or particularly a government person says, I'm going to have a system that removes red tape, what does it do? It creates red tape. So look Claire, uh, really in terms of our message, what is the uh, role of private providers? A very, very important one. We are looking at a market strategy. We are looking at a restructuring economy and the importance of skills and qualifications. So I wish you well for the rest of the conference. I give you one advice, one piece of advice, and don't, don't uh, listen to Michael Hall if he says you want to have a quiet drink, because it will not end that way. Thank you, guys.